What's up guys and welcome to episode 8 of Bonnie Inku's Rising Sun painting series. In this episode we'll be showing how to paint the lucky god Ibisu as voted for over on Patreon. Which if you haven't done so already, you should come join us on the Bonnie Inku Patreon or at least give the page a follow. That way you can be notified whenever the most recent Bonnie Inku project is complete and be able to see photos of the completed project prior to the release of its video tutorial. Or, if that's not something that interests you, at least hit that subscribe button down below and be sure to select that little bell next to it so you can get notified whenever a new Bonnie Inku video gets posted. Alright, let's get started. To start things off, I decided to color some parts of the model a little bit differently than normal, where instead of applying a normal base coat, I instead used various layers of washes to give color to the fish, bird, and his shoes and pants, which gave them some nice color while also starting them off with a nice level of contrast. To do this, I applied red tone to the fish, Cassandra yellow to the pants and the shoes, and a one-to-one -one mix of dark tone and strong tone to the bird. I then took some red ink and accentuated the tail and fins on the fish, followed by some dry brushing of all the scales of the fish using Midland Flush, using the tip and side of the brush to pick out the top of the scales and edges of the fins to pop them out just a little bit more. After that, I thinned down some red ink with some water in a 1 to 5 ratio and washed all the fish scales to give that midland flesh a slight red tint. I then applied red ink to the fins, putting it in between the raised edges to pump up the saturation and help differentiate them from the scales. Then, to create some fun contrast on the scales and differentiate them even further from the fins, I applied various layers of purple tone to the bottom half of the scales and used some two brush blending to create a smooth transition. After that, I came in with some Midland Flush to base coat the fish's head as well as Obisu's skin. I then applied a heavy dry brush of Pale Flesh to the fish head to pop out the details, which I used a nice soft tip makeup brush to do which I'll leave a link to in the description below because I've really liked this set so far. It's got a good variety of brushes, small and large, and it was a really good deal. Mm -hmm. 
After that, I created some easy highlights on his skin using some wet dry brushing, which I recently learned is also known as overbrushing in the mini painting world. So to do the overbrushing, like I described in my beginner's guide, which you should also check out and I'll put a link to up in the corner, I got a bit of paint onto the end of the brush and then rubbed the brush on a paper towel to remove most of the paint, periodically testing it on the back of my hand till just a bit of paint was applied and smeared when wiped across the back of my hand. I then took that brush and rubbed it back and forth along the surfaces that I wanted to highlight which in turn creates some nice easy highlights that somewhat replicated what it would have looked like had I applied the highlights using an airbrush. I then added a drop of white to the mix and applied that in the same manner to brighten up the highlights just a little bit further, followed by adding an additional drop of white and repeating that same process to create the final highlights on the skin. After that, I gave that skin a wash using a 1 to 1 mix of flesh tone and water to help smooth out the blend between those three highlights, as well as give the skin a bit of contrast. Then while waiting for that wash to dry, I applied some red tone to the fish head, which gave it a bit of a tint and helped it fit in with the rest of the fish. After that initial flesh wash was nice and dry, I then two brush blended on some additional flesh wash around the edges of his skin and in the crevices to help deepen the shadows and create a smooth transition between the shadows and the highlights. With the skin now done, I moved back to working on the fish by applying a dry brush of pale flesh, midland flesh, and light gray to the fish head to pop out the details once more then came in with my brush and accentuated various areas to pop out those highlights just a little bit more. I then undercoated the eye with some light gray to make painting the white a little bit easier in future steps. After that, I used some red tone to deepen the shadows on the fish head, wet blending it in like was done on the skin earlier to keep things nice and smooth. After that, I painted the eye white, followed by a couple layers of Cassandra yellow, applying each coat a little bit lower towards the bottom corner of each eye to create a nice yellow gradient. I then applied light tone to the upper part of each eye, again applying each layer closer to the top corner of each eye, which resulted in the eye having a nice gradient from dark brown to bright yellow, which in the end helped give the eye a nice natural look. I then painted a black circle in the center of each eye to form the pupil and then finished off the eyes by adding a small light reflection in the top of each eye using white.
I then did some cleanup on the bird using some light gray, followed by a one to one mix of strong tone and dark tone. I then used some blue tack to mask off the fish and help protect it from the dry brushing that we had done on the bird. With the fish now well protected, I applied a dry brush of a one to one mix of bone white and earth to the different parts of the feathers to help pop them out, followed by a two to one mix of bone white and earth, and finally, a dry brush of straight bone white. After that, I washed the feathers once again using a one to one mix of dark tone and strong tone which helped smooth out those highlights a bit and re-establish some of that lost contrast. After that, I applied light gray to the head, beak, and the feet. I then applied a one to one mix of blue tone and dark tone to the beak, feet, and the tail feathers. I also applied this in various areas on the feathers to deepen the shadows and give the bird a slight blue tint. I then came back with some light gray and applied some edge highlights to the beak and feet to finish those off, followed by some bone white on the head feathers and feathers around the feet. After that, I applied some fine highlights of bone white to pick out the edges of some of the feathers on the head. Then to finish off the bird, I used some flat red to create those red stripes on his head, followed by a small dot of black to create his pupils. I then moved on to working on the pants by applying some highlights of moon yellow to pick out the ridges and help pop them out. I then used turquoise to paint the underside of his cloak as well as the cloth that's wrapped around his waist. After that, I took leather brown and base coated his hat, then applied some edge highlights to his hat using earth, followed by the final highlight, which was done with a two to one mix of bone white and earth, which was also used to undercoat the water canister and his fish basket. And his fish basket. 
Which, speaking of which, that reminds me. While I was looking up what that basket was and making sure it actually was a fishing basket, I learned some interesting things about Ibisu. Out of all the Shichifukujin, the seven lucky gods, Ibisu is the only one whose origins are purely Japanese. And he's carrying that freaking huge fish on his back, which I want to say is a red sea bream, to symbolize prosperity and abundance, particularly in meals. Also, he's apparently slightly crippled and deaf, so he gets celebrated during the month of no gods, the Kanazuki, or October, because when all the gods were summoned, Obisu didn't hear the summons because he's partially deaf, so he's still around and available to worship. There's still abundance and plenty in October, guys. Alright, let's get back to painting! Next, I base coated the water canister with bone white, followed by some washes of light tone to give us some shading. Then while waiting for that to dry, I applied some strong tone to his fish basket, making sure to get some wash in all those little holes. After those washes were nice and dry, I came back with some light tone and continued to shade the bottom of that canister, then overbrush some bone white on the top of the canister to create some easy highlights, then dry brush the fish basket using a 2 to 1 mix of bone white and earth to pop out those details. After that, I came in with some flat red and painted the ropes around the canister, his necklace, and his shoelaces, followed by some dark tone to create some nice contrast. After that, I base coated all the gold using old gold, then gave it a wash with light tone. I then used turquoise to base coat the stone on his necklace, then highlighted the bottom two thirds of the stone using a one to one mix of turquoise and bone white, and then the bottom third of the stone using a one to two mix of those same colors.
I then base coated his fishing hook using model air gunmetal, then applied some highlights to both that gunmetal and the gold using chainmail silver. Then to finish off that sash around his waist, I applied some Draconoff Nightshade to darken things down, then applied some edge highlights using turquoise, followed by a one-to-one -one mix of turquoise and white. After that, I used a little bit of white to pick out his eyes, then came in with some black and created little pupils, as well as based the beard, eyebrows, and his little side patches of hair. I then use a 1 to 2 mix of white and black to edge highlight all the hair and finish it off. Then, before base coating his clothes, I came in with a 1 to 3 mix of light gray and white to clean up his robes and make it easier to apply the base coat. After cleaning up that cloth, I blocked in some basic highlights using a couple coats of Livery Green. I then came in with a 1 to 3 mix of jade green and livery green to base coat the rest of the cloth and create the mid-tone. After which, I applied a layer of matte varnish since those greens left things rather glossy.
Then once that matte varnish was nice and dry, I applied some white over all those highlighted areas, blending it a bit into the mid-tone area, then came back in with a brush and did some blending over those spots to smooth things out a bit and pick out some of the edges a little bit more. After that, I came in with some lighter green and applied that over the entire cloth to brighten everything up and create some nice bright highlights where all those white areas are. Then as the final step before moving on to doing the base, I applied some jade green into the crevices to create some shadows and two brush blend of them into the mid-tone to create some nice transitions. Then with the main model now complete, it was time to work on the base, which I wanted to create a fun sandy look so it looked like Obisu was coming out of the water carrying a brand new fish that he just snatched out of the ocean. First I thinned down some white glue with some water and applied that to the front half of the base, then put it in a box of sand, then lightly tapped off any excess sand that didn't stick to the base. I then used some dark green and Prussian blue acrylic ink to create a water effect on the other side of the base by first applying some dark green to the base, then blending in some Prussian blue until I got the desired gradient. Then, after leaving it to dry for a bit to make sure the sand wouldn't pop off the base, I thinned down some green ink with some water and applied that to the edge of the sand to make it look a little damp. I then took some dark green and mixed it together with some water texture paint so that it had just enough to give it a bit of color but didn't make it so that it was particularly dark. I then dabbed that on the dark green area of the base trying to make little tiny waves to make it look like the tide was gently rolling in. I then repeated those same steps with a mixture of dark green and Prussian blue ink, transitioning to have more Prussian blue ink as I got closer to the back of the base. I then left that to dry overnight to let things cure. Then after those waves were all cured, 
I applied some edge highlights to the tops of the waves using some dead white to create some little white caps. After that, I applied some light tone to the edge of the sand to make it look a little bit more damp. Then after that had dried, I used a two-tone mix of sunny skin tone and bone white to paint the front half of the base and dry brush the top of the sand to help pop out the edges and brighten it up just a little bit. I then applied dark green ink around the back end of the base, followed by some overbrushing of a two-tone mix of sunny skin tone and bone white to blend it in with the front part of the base. I then use a mix of dark green and Prussian blue ink to create a transition from dark green to back across the back third of the base. I then protected the model by applying some gloss varnish on the entire model and then left it to dry and let it fully harden. I then matted things back down using some Tester's Dull Coat which has easily become my favorite matte varnish. After which, I applied some satin varnish to the fish to make it look like it's a little bit wet still, and then finished it all off by applying some gloss varnish to the fish eyes and to the water to make sure it was nice and glossy. And there you have it, Abisu is now complete. And now it's time for the annoying phrase of the day. Fish basket. Which was also used to undercoat the water canister and his fish basket. And his fish basket. Then dry brush the fish. <laughs> then dry brush the fish bat. The fish basket. The fish basket, dang it. I like him big. I like him chunky. Then I did some model code gum and all this stuff and all this crap. And, um. <laughs> That's enough of that. Thank you guys for joining. Catch you guys on the next one where we'll be painting Komainu. Fukujin! Abisu, complete! Bonnaroo, out! Bonkai!